Finally, Tata has launched the Tata Curve Ice with its pricing and specifications. So time has come to put it up against the Citroen Basalt. In this video, I'll only be comparing turbo petrol models of the Curve and the Basalt. So if you're in the market for a turbo petrol coupe SUV, stick around to the end of this video as I'll be comparing design, interiors, features, safety and ground clearance, color options, engines and pricing. Please, if you can, share this video with someone considering buying one of these cars because towards the end of the video, in typical car stats fashion, I will be telling you all which one of these two SUV coupes I'll be putting my money on. Let's start things off with the design and whether it's the Curve or the Basalt, they are going to be turning heads when they're out there in the public. The Curve carries the Nexon design forward. It's sharp, aggressive and very modern. The lighting effect on the DRLs will make your inner child giggle and it's the chunkiness that will turn heads. The rear end silhouette though looks a little asymmetrical and rushed. The basalt on the other hand screams Euro design and according to me it is the more stylish car of the two. Subtle design elements and a more mature take on the SUV coupe body style is what defines the basalt's design philosophy and so of course there are no overly aggressive bits that may be polarizing. The headlight design is unique while still being very Citroen and the basalt overall in my opinion wins when it comes to exterior design. Moving into the interiors, the external design philosophy of both these cars gets carried into the interiors as well. The Curve gets the signature two-spoke steering wheel design with an illuminated logo whereas the basalt steering setup looks more dated but good nonetheless. The dashboard though is where the Curve does it really better. It's got a nice big display, mood lighting and a massive panoramic sunroof. The Basalt on the other hand though is definitely an improvement to the C3 Aircross's interiors but it is still quite boring. Sure, it's put together well but isn't fancy or modern. It isn't very exciting or inspiring. It also doesn't get a sunroof and I get it, there are still some people out there who don't really want a sunroof but what it gets is two clever bits. The first of which is the adjustable thigh support and secondly the adjustable headrest support. Both of these features are for the rear seats only and are available in the higher end variants. Despite the Basalt getting these two segment first features, the interior look and feel is better on the Tata Curve. The Tata Curve also gets variant specific interior color schemes for its pure, smart, creative and accomplished variants. However, the Basalt is the car with the better interior space, thanks to smaller wheels, a smaller boot and better space management. Moving on to stance and practicality, the Basalt gets a ground clearance of 180 mm and a boot space of 470 liters, whereas the Tata Curve gets a ground clearance of 190 mm and a boot space of a larger 500 liters. So once again, it's one plus one points for Griffin Curve. Moving on to safety, we all know that this is Tata's forte. Both of these cars get six airbags as standard, but the Curve also gets ADAS. The ADAS features include a whole list of features like automatic braking, lane keeping alerts, stop and go adaptive cruise control and more. The Curve also gets an e-call assistance button in case of a medical emergency and a b-call assistance button in the event of a car breakdown. And to top it all off, it also gets a 360 degree camera. And well, obviously, if the Tata Curve gets this point too, and things are looking a little weak for the Basalt's proposition. Let's now move into the color schemes. These are the color options you can get the Curve in. Gold Essence, Flame Red, Pure Grey, Daytona Grey, Opera Blue, and Pristine White. Dual Tone colors, however, are available in the Creative Plus S, Accomplished S, and Accomplished Plus A variants. With the Basalt, you get two dual tone options which are garnet red and polar white, both of which come with a black roof. The monotone options are steel grey, garnet red, platinum grey, cosmo blue and polar white. However, I'm really, really disappointed that Citroen hasn't given the Basalt this yellow option. It looks so juicy. See, neither the Basalt nor the Curve gets a black color option, 
but I'm sure Tata is going to introduce a dark edition of the curve sometime in the future. And to keep up, I really wish Citroen brings that hot yellow color. One thing to note is that some of these paint schemes are variant specific on both the cars and with that, let's move on to the features. Well, the Citroen doesn't really get much and the Tata Curve is going to be the clear winner of this round, but here's the list anyway. You get LED vision projector headlamps, 16 inch diamond cut alloy wheels, adjustable rear seat thigh support and headrest, a 10.25 inch Citroen Connect infotainment system, a 7 inch Supervision digital TFT cluster, a rear parking camera and hill hold and ESP. The curve on the other hand, good lord, there's just too many features to talk about and quite a few of which you may not even use. Pause this video to know them all cause reading out all of them is going to take me a few breaths. Finally, let's get into the last part of this technical comparison and that is engines and pricing. Let's start off with the manuals. The curve with its Revotron engine is more than 2 lakhs cheaper when it comes to on-road Bangalore pricing. It also has more power than the Basalt, although slightly lesser torque. The Hyperion engine though is a lot more powerful than the other two. With the automatics, the Basalt makes more price sense, but that's only because it gets a torque converter gearbox, whereas the other two get a 7-speed DCT. The Basalt also closes the gap when it comes to torque numbers, but that Hyperion engine should be a lot more fun to drive. Once again, the Tata Curve gets this point. Alright, now that we've done the technical comparison and we have the scores with us, it is quite evident that the Tata Curve is the technically superior product. But you know me, especially with cars, I'd rather put my money on something that is more reliable and long-lasting. With all the gizmos that the Tata Curve has to offer, there's that many things that can go wrong and there's that many things that can fail. I'd rather buy the safer car and that has to be the Basalt because of how low on tech it is. And it gets the fundamentals right. It's got very similar power figures through a potent engine and the interior is a lot roomier than the Curve. But the biggest reason you should get the Basalt is because of its ride quality. Citroen likes to call it the flying carpet effect. So I'd put my money on the Citroen Basalt because I think I'd be rather happy with the elegant design and the minimal but effective feature set. But what would y'all do? Let me know in the comments below. I hope y'all enjoyed this typical car stats technical comparison. Please subscribe to the channel. It's going to take me a long way and I'll see y'all in the next car stats video.